I'm here with Brandon Good and uh, Zach Law. And uh, Brandon, uh, you're uh, Thunder Alley. Uh, Hot Rod's out of PA. Go ahead. Yes, that's correct. Yep. And uh, Zach, this is uh, not your first rodeo here at the uh, Coastal Virginia Auto Show, but you're out of Burkeville. Yep, Burkeville, Virginia. Yep. I uh, love Custom Search Out. So, anyhow, you know, you guys are, you know, there are those of us that have been around for a while. And uh, I still feel great, still feeling good, you know, all right, I'm going to make it to tomorrow. But you guys are going to be the future of, of the car industry and so on and so forth. So we'll start with Zach. If you go back, Way on back, 40, 50 years back. Before me. Before you, uh, almost before me. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, everything was a bit different in terms of, you know, materials, things to buy, ideas, everything. Things were much more uh, basic to some, some extent, unless you were Big Daddy Roth and you were getting really crazy with the beatnik and, and, and other stuff. But so, what do you see trending right now uh, with modified and custom? Uh, well, it depends on how, how we approach it. If we approach it based on material and you know what we're using, or if we're approaching it on design and concept and you know the trends that are going as far as the cars are being built. Um, I mean, the quality of the materials and stuff has completely transformed. I mean, year after year after year, it's different, 100%. Everything changes. Yep. Every single day is changing, um, and what we do, our processes get a little bit more refined, a little bit better, quality gets a little bit higher, but along with that goes to the quality of the car. Um, the one thing that I see right now is, is the quality, the craftsmanship, and the attention to detail is growing tremendously. I mean, every every year you come out and you just see something and you're like, wow, okay, that's next level, even from what we thought was next level uh, last year. Um, and I think the trend as far as what we're looking at now, everything seems to be going more over the top, but going a little bit more old school, if that makes sense. The colors aren't as flashy and things like that. We're stepping it down a little bit on that. Makes absolute absolute sense. Uh, you know, at, at, at some point, uh, nostalgia goes out of vogue, but then it comes then it comes back around. It's uh, e even with some of the, the resto mods. You know, they're spending big bucks to hop up original Lincoln V12 motors. I mean, it's costing crazy money to get that done. Um, because it all has to be hand fabricated because it's not off the shelf. But a lot of people are doing it. Um, yeah, and the and the other thing is is our generation is you know we're in our thirties now, um, so our generation and the generation before us are starting to come into a little bit more too. So you see the trends of like box body Mustangs and uh, '80s Camaros. You know? I was going to say I rock Camaros and that whole generation like we would have had in high school, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, OBS trucks, you know, yep. <laughs> everything Square we body trucks, <laughs> dump, you know, trucks we take to the dump and throw the trash away are, are hot now, you know, that's the... Oh, and, and yeah, you, Brandon mentioned square body trucks, I mean, they're, they're just killing it out there, I mean, trucks are just grabbing so much market share. You go to SEMA, and I won't say necessarily the majority of it, but a lot of it, whereas, you know, even 10 years ago, there was truck stuff there but it is like overwhelming now yeah it seems to be the the hot bill right now of everybody everyone wants a truck and they all want technology and twin turbos and they want to be able to drive it to the beach and you know take it to car shows at the same time 
the, the one thing I'd say about that, and I think you've probably seen this, is we do more of the, the higher end show car kind of scene. Um, and what's really interesting is, is there's two different worlds out there. You know, the, the high end show car world is still very much street rods and muscle cars, but then there's an entire truck culture, and that's all it is is truck culture. And, you know, it's an entire different world. And, once you start branching into it, it just kind of opens up a whole new avenue. At least for us as builders, I mean, what they like and what they what they want is you know polar opposite from what we may be used to. It lets your creativity go a little bit more because now you have a whole different genre of um, colors, like you said, you know, the flat clears. Um, all the new cars are like solid colors and non-metallics and non-pearls. Airbags, airbags, airbags. <laughs> Everything's bag, big wheels. Oh yeah, for sure. Bag bags are big. Uh, what, whether it's new builds, resident mods, whatever it happens to be. Absolutely. Technology there is a whole lot better. They're a lot more reliable uh, than they than they once were too. So I mean, it, it just keeps getting bigger, and bigger, better, and better. So I mean, you've got a essentially an evolving canvas and, and a new palette to work from every year you know it just gets better but you know the one thing about it and you mentioned it uh, it's like the bar keeps getting higher and higher and higher um, and it seems like a lot more people are achieving that bar so it's a lot more I don't want to call it competition but it's a lot more people that are uh, adding to the style and adding to that you know like you said like trucks and all that stuff it seems like there's a lot of shops doing really nice work you know you don't have to be a big name shop to to do nice work you know you just stay with the trend and you you build what you like and most of the time it turns out awesome and, right. that's, and that's motivation i mean that's everybody's continuing to raise that level like you said that's just motivation and that's why you see such high quality stuff coming out of the woodwork that you never thought you'd see Ten years ago, I mean, we would never dream that the cars would be where they're at now. Well, and, and, and some of the materials are easier to work with, too. Some some are not, but, but some of the basic stuff is easier to work with. Um, so, you guys are doing the, doing high-end stuff, and, and we all have, I'm sure you have people that come by and talk to you, what have you. You know, they want to get involved in the car hobby. Um, maybe not exactly sure what direction they're going to go in, but they want to try to learn how to do some of their own work. Vocational training is almost still non-existent out there at, at, in the public school sector. It, it used to be pretty heavy, not anymore. So, you know, that's harmful, I guess. People don't have the experience with working with their hands that they once did, but, you know, People can learn to work. And I'll add it to that too. It seems like the Votech school will kind of get you into the field, but I feel like you have to actually have the drive and you know the work ethic and all that stuff to actually get to you know the level that we're talking about. You know, it's 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 not something you just learn in school. It's gotta be a passion. It's gotta be in your blood, it's gotta be something you really like doing. I'd agree with that hundred percent. I mean, you know. I wish that we had more comprehensive uh, Votech schools out there. I mean, I, I know for me, when I hire somebody and they've been through a class, I mean, most of the time, it doesn't. It, there's not a lot of benefit to it. I would say, honestly, if somebody's trying to get into this industry, find a shop that's willing to train you. Go sweep floors, go do something, and, and actually put forth the effort, because that's going to get you a whole lot further. You're going to learn a whole lot more, a whole lot faster, and make money out of it. And the reality of it is, is it, it, it's a needed position these days. Entry level in, into the industry is something we're, we're, we're lacking, and there's so much opportunity there. I thought you meant the trash guy taking out the trash to sweep the floor. So, you know, that, that's uh, independent business guys with, with, when they're finished at the end of the day because nobody wants to sweep the floors anymore. So you do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'll grab a broom. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, you go back, of, of, you know, when I used to go to shows like this, you know, uh, back when, you know, when we had the Virginia Beach Dome, if there are any long-time Virginia Beach folks here, 
uh, I went to the Virginia Beach Dome to see the World of Wheels and uh, a lot of lead sleds um, in there. That was there. Cecil Prophet's show, wasn't it? Um, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I was six years old, seven years old, something like that. But, uh, you know, the lead sleds were, were popular. Then they sort of just vanished. And, you know, I could be wrong, but it looks like some of that stuff is coming back a little bit. Well, as you know, everything comes full circle eventually. Um, I, you know, if you go up north, Midwest, um, there's still a lot of that cultural culture, but down south is drugs. That's why if you go to Texas, every show is slammed full of drugs. Um, you know, California used to be the roadsters and hot rods. You know, it's just, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, that melting pot phrase, you know, everybody's kind of moving around right now, and I think that that's, might be why you see a little bit more of different things influencing different, you know, other genres of the car. Right. So, as, as far as um, people doing their own work, choosing the shop, that's a really important aspect, and that's something that, you know, when I'm doing the classic car show, that's a topic that we're frequently on, and it's, you know, how to do it the right way. How to choose, how do you go about choosing a shop? What do you do with the shop? Do you contract with them to do part of the build? Do you get them to do all the build? Do you do something yourself? You know, all of these things are, are unanswered questions for the uninitiated, people that know they want to build something. But if you don't do your homework, it can be, you know, people are concerned that it's very expensive these days to get a good build. But if you're not careful, it's going to cost you a whole lot more in the long run if you make poor choices along the way. So I'll uh, start with Brandon and, and come to Zach. And I feel like when it comes to building the car, you should kind of stick to who you trust and who you had going from the beginning. You know, I almost like to reference it to like tattoo artists. Like if you liked your tattoo from the first guy, why did you get the other guy? Because now you're complaining about that tattoo. You know what I mean? It kind of has the same idea. So if you find a shop that you're comfortable with and you're trustworthy with, you should just stay with them. You know, if they're willing to do the work, you know, that you, you know, you want out of your build. And well, you know, and, and if you don't know anyone or you're not familiar with anybody, you need to go to shows like like we're having here and actually talk to the people whose cars look really great, look really outstanding, try to figure out um, who did their car, talk to people in the uh, car culture that understand these guys are really good at this and these guys are really good at that and some have good all around shops. Yeah, do all your due diligence, get all your ducks in a row and start your build. And it's not always, you know, the old adage of you get what you pay for. It couldn't be more true. You know, I know so many people over, over the years, they wanted to, to build something and they end up talking to three or four folks, you know, and, and let's just say somebody hit them at, at 75 and then, you know, they talk to somebody and they hit them at 65K. And then they end up talking to somebody and they hit them at 30K. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to give it to you. And then they send the vehicle over to that guy. That guy hacks it up, makes a mess out of it. You can't replace it. And then he's going to come crawling to you guys. And then he thinks we're going to do it for half price. Because yeah, we feel bad for him. We don't feel bad for you. <laughs> you should have came here from the beginning. Yeah. Well, I always say, if it wasn't for reviews, I would have nothing to do. Um, and, I, and I mean that a whole 100%. See, I got into this business because I watched my dad, when I was growing up, he had a 37 Chevrolet sedan. And it went to six different body shops over the course of 18 years when I was growing up. And every time, it would come back worse than it was. And my dad was very big on... Finding the best deal. Well, the best deal isn't always the best deal if you sit there and you do your research. I and mean, that's the one thing I can say to any customer um, or any potential customer, or anybody wanting to get into it, do your research. And what I mean by that is, is don't just go looking at different shops. I mean, that's, that's important. But sit down and take a piece of paper and 
do some quick research on your own online, and then put a dollar figure to every one of these items that you want to purchase. Um, you know, I always tell people the average car in my shop starts at 70 grand. And what I mean by that is not the total bill, but when they walk in the door, on average, it's 70,000. And in a chat, usually a build starts with the chassis. Um, anymore, it's, it's kind of the common thing to do. So you start with the chassis, chassis is 25 to 35. So let's say 30 for quick numbers. So 35,000, I mean $30,000 chassis. Motor, transmission, combination, 20 grand. So there you go, you're 50. And then wheels and tires that used to be $3,500 or $8,500 plus tires. And you're 10 grand in, in wheels and tires, and you haven't touched it at all. You got a pile of parts sitting on the ground. Yep. How you can unwrap? Haven't done anything but just have Merry Christmas, you know. And it was a very expensive Christmas. Um, but unfortunately, then you, then you have to sit down and you figure, okay, as you as you know, you paint all the time. That's what you do. Um, Paint materials are through the roof. Uh, you know, people used to say, "Man, I had thirty-five hundred dollars in material pre-COVID. Thirty-five hundred dollars was top-end material for uh, an all-over paint job. Average now, you're talking about six to ten for sprayable materials bought from the paint company. You, you can't. That's not us. We have nothing to do with that. It's it's crazy. And and if you think about that. If you don't have someone who knows how to prep it, knows how to lay it down, do all of the things that need to be done beforehand to make the finished product look good because, you know, so many people have the misconception that the paint is going to make it look good. And no, there's a lot of time between the boxes and that paint. You know, a whole lot. There's a whole lot of time that has to be spent on that car, a whole lot of money that has to be spent on that car before you get to that painted, you know, jewelry that you look at on the floor. And that's the important, so, you know, that's why, for example, I bring out a raw metal car. You know, usually some, I have something in my in my booth that's a project, and there's a reason for that, because you go to a lot of shows and you see really, really pretty cars, but six months later, a year later, you know, they're sitting in a climate-controlled garage and the paint's bubbling and there's cracks and flaws everywhere, you know, and when you, you don't know what's underneath it. And so when you're doing your research and you're looking around, Look at the whole process. Find, hey, if you're building cars for a living, it's allow these customers to come in your shop. Let them see that this car is not just a bunch of rust with body filler stuck in it, and, and let them see that you're actually doing your job from the beginning, and that's how, as a customer, you can be full on top of it as well. Know the process 100% through with whoever you choose before you do it. That way you know what you're doing. No, that, that's absolutely the best advice in the whole world because, you know, it's, you don't want to just jump into it head first without knowing what, you know, you just picked up the last copy of Hot Rod Magazine and you're thumbing through and you're like, this is what I want. And you, there's so much involved to get you there. Again, like I said, so many people do, oh, paint job, you know, well, 